shame actually after coming up to this kind of interesting show. It's out there. Uh, have you ever thought uh, a game to have a focal role in our lives? It's quite interesting. Um, games have existed since the antiquity. In the 5,000 years, uh, board games have been found in uh, Egyptian tombs. Uh, the urge towards gaming must be quite ancient. Actually, it is a, a, a cross-cultural phenomenon. Everybody playing games. Children play games, as we all know, as we all did when we were kids. But adults also play games. And soccer may be the very first example that comes to my mind. And all sports activities are like that. And there are games, the TV, as the primetime shows. And there are card games, there are board games, there are computer games. But I'm not going to talk about that kind of game now. I would like to speak about game-like situations when we make decisions. Um, that type of decision is known as strategic decisions because the outcome of the decision does not uh, merely depends on your decision, your choice, but also your opponent's choice. Uh, the science that deals with this kind of situation is known as game theory. Well, life is full of decisions we all have to make. Uh, what career to follow, whom to marry, uh, how to run a business, these are the tough decisions we make. The common element in these decisions is that you're not alone. There are other active decision makers who are uh, interacting with your decision. And they are influencing, influencing your uh, thinking and your actions. This type of decision is known as strategic decision. And the course of action you take is the strategy. In game theory, uh, a game is uh, interaction of the collection of people. Well, this could be applied to any kind of situation, if you can well imagine. Uh, let us take a classic, very classic example of the game theory. All right. What is this? Okay. Now here's the story. There is a boy uh, who has a red hat and actually would like to have, prefers the blue hat. And there is this girl, she has a blue hat, <coughs> hat but would like to have the red one. In fact, they both uh, would like to have two of the hats rather than either of the hats alone. And in fact, again, either have the hats, they prefer either of the hats to a non-hat at all. Now, this is the game. The game is, they are given a choice. Uh, either give the hat what they have, or keep the hat that they have in their hand. There are assumptions here. They, this is a full information game, which means they are uh, fully aware of their desires. And this is a one-time shot. The game is not going to be repeated. OK, these are the payoffs, what we call in game theory payoff, is the value of each hat for each of the players. The red hat value for the boy is one, but two for the girl. And the value of blue hat for the boy is two, and having both hats is three, and vice versa. Ah, are they going to make the fair exchange? That's the question. 
This is the payoff matrix that we use in game theory solutions. Here I have the player one on the left hand side. On the top, the player two. I have strategies. This is the strategies of the player one, and these are the strategies of the player two. Here are the payoffs in the cells. This is the actual payoff matrix of our game. We have the strategies of the boy and the girl, they are identical. Let's see what happens, let's play the game. If he chooses the, the, the keeping the hat, that strategy, and she does the same thing, they will both have one and one payoff, because this is the original situation. As opposed to that, if the boy keeps the hat, and she exchanges the hat, that's bad news for her, because he's going to get three, and she will have zero. If he exchanges the hat, then the results will be like this. Uh, if he exchanges the hat, if she keeps the hat, then it's bad news for, for the boy, because he's going to get zero, and she will get three. And if they exchange a hat fairly, both is going to get two. What do you think the, the result of the game would be? You think it's going to be a fair exchange or not? Well, obviously this is the solution. Everybody thinks that. But the game theory solution is this, simply because there is no actual reason for the boy to trust the girl. And she has no actual reason to trust the boy. They are playing their dominating strategies. Because the dominating strategy is this. When you're playing your dominating strategy, you are better off, no matter what the opponent does. Same thing is true for the girl. Because if she keeps the hat, she's going to get uh, at least one hat at a time. If you see, one is greater than zero, three is greater than two. And this, that's why we have the game theory solution, keeping the hat. Well, that's, that's sad, isn't it? I mean, that predicament is known as prisoner's dilemma in game theory solutions. And uh, the remarkable feature of that is uh, players are playing their dominating strategy to maximize their payoffs. Uh, and yet, they are getting worse than if they are playing their minimizing strategy. This can be applied to many situations in life. I mean, uh, the, uh, more or less, we come across the uh, prisoner's dilemma in life. One thing is the firms competing in industry. They always cheat each other. They try to be one step ahead. The same thing is the attitude towards global warming. Everybody supports the idea, but no one actually takes a step in real action. In fact, does the opposite. As an advert graphic problem, we have this uh, prisoner's dilemma again, because um, everybody wants to use the highest capacity of the uh, bandwidth, whereas uh, if they share, the flow of information will be higher. That uh, is known as a good old uh, problem of tragedy of the commons, over grazing the cattle. Uh, the, the farmers uh, seek self-interest, on the contrary, of the best interest of the whole group, and pleading the uh, feeding capacity of uh, the whole land. And the same thing happens in fishing too. Evolutionary biology, uh, all the uh, genes have, have the behavior of uh, this uh, dilemma because they have the uh, self-protection attitude. That's why they're called this selfish gene. Well, last note for the uh, recent phenomenon of blockchain. Uh, the uh, market and the media has been amazed at the 
achievement of blockchain technology and their consequences of uh, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. And the question was, how does it come about that people trust one another in such insecure environment? Uh, in essence, they were trading uh, currencies. But the truth is the opposite, in fact, because the system, the blockchain technology system, disengages the human trust element. In fact, what the system does uh, so to speak uh, human trust free environment created. So human trust free environment. That's why it has become so successful. Uh, well, all of these lessons shows us that are we not trusting humans then? No, game theory doesn't teach us this. It simply teaches us how to be smart and fair. Thank you.